Whatever you do, don't look in the hole, I swear to God. Don't look you in don't want to look in the hole. I don't want to. <laughs> it's so slippery. Yeah. Oh, look at that. No. Ugh. Don't put it around. <laughs> Oh, oh, no. <laughs> hey Love Winners, it's Lau86 here with another video. You know the saying, if it tastes bad, it's probably good for you? Well, I don't think that's always true. We've all heard the stereotypes. Some Chinese people believe that eating a certain part of an animal will make that certain part of their body stronger. Like fish eyes are good for your eyes. Or pig brains will make you smart. And tiger peanut... Uh... Anyway, while shooting our TV show Conquering Northern China, we knew that from previous experiences filming the last series, Conquering Southern China, that we'd have to eat all kinds of weird stuff. I mean, we were riding around for 5,000 kilometers in some of the most exotic places that China had to offer, so of course we were gonna stumble across some weird foods. Last time was hornets, snake bile, and even beef cooked in cow vomit or dung soup, whatever you wanna call it. You would think that we'd be pros at this point. I mean, what could possibly be worse than eating an animal whose flesh was literally cut off its body and then later boiled in its own stomach juices in literally four different stages of digestion? Nothing, we thought. I'm getting ahead of myself. You see, if you're a fan of this channel, or my other channel, ADV China, which I co-host with Winston, Serpent ZA, you'll know that I predominantly talk about China, living in China, exploring China, and basically China-related stuff. So obviously in that time, I've seen a lot of the country. I've even lived as far from my current home of Guangdong in the south as Inner Mongolia. I honestly wish I had a camera back in those days. No, no, stop that. No! Anyway, despite my journeys through the deserts, the jungles, the islands, the mosques, the temples, and the wastelands of China, I, for some reason, had never visited one of China's most well-known provinces, and that's Shandong. Now, you may have never heard of Shandong, but you've most definitely heard of its most well-known city, which is Qingdao. Yes, it's the same as the beer that you can get in your local Chinese restaurant, but no, it is not pronounced Qingtao. Stop it! It was spelled differently back then because they hadn't really come up with a good way of putting Chinese into Roman letters yet. So the Wade Giles system was as good as it got before Pinyin, which is used today. Anyway, I still don't know why I never made it a point to travel to the rich coastal city, which is home to one of my favorite things in the world, beer. I mean, the Germans actually set up a brewing plant there and made one of China's best beers, Qingdao. They even drink it out of bags there, but that's another story for another time. When we mapped our route to explore all of northern China, all the way up to the Russian border for our TV show. Are you filming? Like, yeah. When I'm in Russia. <laughs> yeah. I was delighted when we chose not Beijing, but Qingdao as our entry point. Little did I know that this seemingly normal Chinese city and the rest of Shandong province was one of the weirdest and most awesome places that I would ever ride through. Shandong province ended up being one of the most communist feeling provinces I've ever been to. So we're in the middle of nowhere, Shandong province. Yes, we are, and there's a. Well. That. That's a spaceship. Why does the spaceship have floodlights on the top? I don't know. It's actually a machinery company, and this is just the kind of weird novelty stuff you see when you're roaming around China. Yeah, sure. When we were in Hunan province, which is the birthplace of Chairman Mao, his presence and just kind of communism in general and this cult of personality was definitely felt there, from the rosary bead resembling charms found in every taxi, to the hammer and sickle insignia literally everywhere you look to the sad Soviet-era looking towns and cities with not one ounce of creativity put into the soulless architecture. But Shandong had these planned villages. These villages that were so meticulously organized, so lined up, so clean, so proper, all with a Chinese communist sign displaying which village it was and what it was that they did in said village. Shandong, eh? It's, it's really, really beautiful here. We've got all these fields and tree-lined roads, you know, look at that. In Guangdong, where we live, it's we don't usually get these really long, awesome stretches. Yeah, it's usually crowded, people popping out in front of you. And... 
The roads were taken care of. They were smooth and drama free. The towns felt like they were planned very well, and pretty much every path that led us to these villages felt very well monitored. In fact, we were actually chased away by a government official who wouldn't allow us to film in his village. I must say, Seamilk, I am absolutely loving the countryside here. Some of the best riding I've done in years, to be honest. Like, it's really, really nice roads, a nice little breeze, the temperature is perfect, you get a nice river, there's tree lined areas, it's like, it's properly good fun. Yeah, it's good. It's so nice to get out of the city and just enjoy this kind of thing, huh? It's a good cold drink of water. <laughs> Absolutely. The feeling was a huge change from the chaos of southern China, and it left us with a very strange impression. But it was a good impression. But mostly a windy impression. Seriously, why does nobody talk about the fact that Shandong province is the most ridiculously windy place in the entire world? Chicago be damned, it's not that bad there. But Shandong? I thought my skin was going to be torn from my skeleton. It's almost impossible to have a conversation on the side of the road because it's so windy. The coastal winds literally rip through the landscape and make riding into the headwind the most arduous task. It made 100 kilometers feel like 400 kilometers, and it was a shame because the roads were so good. One of those rides led us to one of the more organic villages in Shandong called Rongcheng. Now we had never heard of it, or its main accolade, you know, the village with houses that have seaweed roofs. Looking forward to our next destination? Yeah, we're going to Rongcheng, right? Yeah, some, some other place where apparently they've got seaweed on the roofs of their houses, which sounds uh, not very fascinating. That probably stinks. We're about to find out we have to stay in one. Seriously, <laughs> that's what it's famous for. Needless to say, we were pretty curious as to see how you can make a seaweed roof. So, we have arrived at this uh, house. Something special about it, and that is uh, it's over 100 years old and they also built the roofs out of seaweed, but mm -hmm. let's go inside. Knock, knock, see who's there. No one, because it's ours. Yeah, well. This oh, you gotta do yeah, this. You just lift that down. And then you gotta... You get, no, it's loop it out, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Loop. You got it right, yeah, there we go. Stop trying to do this with one hand. <laughs> That's a good excuse. <laughs> Okay. Push. No, no, there's wooden bars behind it, dude. No, there isn't. Turn the, turn the handle. See the handles? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Is it now? I've never seen anything like it. Come, come into my house. Yeah. I clearly live here. Yeah, modern technology, eh? So you get this, like, courtyard area. It's random rooms on the side, but the interesting yeah. thing is these little stairs, and I think we can get a pretty good view up here. Yeah, let's just go up there. That's something I spotted earlier. Hundred-year-old hangers. <laughs> That's heavy, nice. Heavy There's the sea over there. Yeah, <laughs> it is the sea though, and it's very blue water, which is quite nice. Uh, yeah, you got little farms in these whole neighborhood of all these seaweed houses, which is kind of cool. But this is our very own. Quite big, eh? Yeah, I like your telephone on the roof in case you need to call someone. Let's see. That's a hundred-year-old phone. If I ever <laughs> yeah. Truck to tires. Uh, it is kind of cool. It's a little weird neighborhood. I've never stayed in like a little Chinese neighborhood so, before. It's kind of like a hutong kind of. And it actually ended up being a main scene for the show, as did the main character of the village, Mr. Chu. You should watch the show to see that badass in his epic house. This is where they cook, and there's actually a wood stove right here, and they pump in the wood, and then they have this massive, massive pan, which is called the da guo, and they basically use a wood fire thing, and they constantly scrape it so it doesn't burn, and they swivel it around. They just make these massive fried dishes, basically. It's like the biggest walk you'll ever find. Let's take a look at these rooms. Uh, I guess this is where I'm going to be staying. It's <laughs> the the bed is basically a a brick. I'm I'm sorry, but like feel just feel that. Simo, give it a punch. No, like a punch. Oh man, that's yeah. just a piece of wood. It, it <laughs> literally is just a piece of wood. That's literally just a. Oh. Wow. So the eight transistor radio, dude. ACDC. That's ancient, dude. It looks quite old. Now that's that is old furniture. That's probably antique. Wow. Huh. That's pretty cool. Dude, if you're ever... a grandma. <laughs> anyway, the village was charming. The most quaint little town in China that I had ever seen. Being on the coast, you can imagine that the main diet was seafood, and much to Winston's dismay. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner was seafood. It's very earthy. It tastes as if there's dirt in them. Some kind of egg. <laughs> seafood. Okay. Too fishy. I was thrilled, as I love seafood, and the clams, oysters, fresh fish, 
and all kinds of other weird creatures that were presented to us daily for next to nothing in price were primarily gobbled up by me happily every single day. Except for the sea snails, by the way. Usually I don't have an issue with most foods, but sea snails, sea slugs, conch... I don't get how people can deal with a film of slime that you get coating your mouth every time you eat them. Seriously, brush your teeth as much as you want. I swear to god your mouth will feel like you drank glue and mucus for days after. Rongcheng was a fairy tale example of what a village in Shandong was like, and the feel was like no other place I had been to in China. However, we quickly found out later in the journey that Shandong was not representative of northern China at all. Simultaneously, the cities of Shandong had a very European feel to them, which makes sense with Qingdao being a German concession and Yantai, another city, being under German control for 20 years. However, before the journey properly begun, we were tasked with finding our first meal. So rewind back to Qingdao. Now the weird dishes that I had mentioned from the last show, like hornets and cow dung hot pot, happened later in our journey. So we had weeks of hardships and terrible roads and dangerous close calls that kind of harden us up, make us men. But this time we had to go straight into it. There was no build up here. Get off the plane, go search at 5am in a gross fish market full of scorpions and bizarre sea life and find some sea penises. Awesome idea. So there we were, Winston and I, walking around with our producers, Rick and Mark, following us around with massive cameras as we had to ask complete strangers right in the face, excuse me sir, where can I find the sea penises? I've been told it's behind a truck down there, so we're gonna go see if we can find it. I gotta be honest with you, like these, the seafood market here, it's like better than a zoo. Yeah. It's pretty fun to see, like, and the, the seafood's really different than the stuff we see down south. There's some, some similarities, but there's some other cool ones too. Yeah, Stepping over fetid fish juices and guts and walking past what looked like a scene of a horror movie about a genocide at an aquarium, we were pointed in the direction of a stairwell that led to one of the most dank, wet, and depressing rooms I had ever been in. Our boots sloshed through the runoff from these boxes that exuded the most vile stench you could imagine. The fishiest of fish smells. The bloodiest of blood smells. And yes, there they were, wriggling in all their man member resembling goodness. The sea penis. <laughs> you wanna touch it, Winston? You wanna touch my sea penis? So see milk, we have a little bag. What's in this little bag? That's a bag of dicks. It sea is. dicks though. It's absolutely disgusting. First time I've ever seen them, they do look absolutely terrible. They've peed on us with them. They look like used condoms that someone's gone and thrown a bunch of, uh, what do you call that, tripe? Tripe around them. Inside. Inside them? And then shoved the condom inside like a, an intestine. One of the worst things is that like, it's got like a skin color, just like a human, but also when you look inside, they said their babies were in there. There's these like little intestinal row sacks in there that I hope we don't have to eat. Now if you haven't seen the show, I don't want to spoil it too much, but yes, it was in fact worse than cow dung hot pot. A lot worse. See, look, I can't believe we're about to eat this crap. It looks awful. It looks like a raw, kind of cut up penis. Oh god, I just looked inside of it. It looks like one of those, like, uh, leeches or something. It's got, like, circular mouths in it. Oh, oh. Yeah, it's pretty awful. We're gonna eat it raw. Yeah. Like, I like sashimi, right? This is a different level. We're gonna have to find out, but I really don't think it's going to have a very nice texture. Because it has, like, be the the mucus worst. skin. And it's gonna bite back. <laughs> it's gonna trampoline, you know? I'm sure. I'm sure it's gonna be disgusting. Anyway, um, yeah, things you gotta do to make a good documentary. <laughs> Why can't they send us on one of these, like, let's go to Europe and sample all the best hors d'oeuvres? Yeah, like have the best kebab or something, you know, like yeah. the they, finest cheeses. Yeah, cheese, cheese and wine tasting. I, Nobody wants to see that, apparently. I do. So, Rick, uh, you ready for your first sea penis? First sea penis of your life? I don't want to. <laughs> you watched our reaction. I don't want to. We're actually just hamming it up. Whatever you do, don't look in the hole, I swear to God. Don't look You don't want to look in the hole. Okay. You can look in this hole. No. Oh, look at that. Hold on. Look at that. Wait, he doesn't have a tubular one. That's not fair. Look at He's a just like a sliver. Yeah. Your hat's blocking me. <laughs> yeah, did, did, did you do that again? <laughs> you want to put it around? <laughs> Is it yummy? <laughs> it's 
Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. What does it taste like? Oh, shit. I don't know what. <laughs> it's like skin. It is. I don't know what skin tastes like, but it tastes like skin. Yeah, grab that white one. I have no qualms with the tubular. Nice. Oh, it's pumping. It's pumping up. See, that that still like contracts and stuff. Really pumps oh. up one, is it? Yeah, look. Yeah, it contracts on the, the fat end. Which is the hole you were talking about? Ooh, it's like a slip. The holes we saw, we saw veins inside and they were like all in one? Uh, you could. No one's done that yet. God, do it, do it, do it. Oh, he's gonna suck it up. Oh, 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 he's oh, oh, it's very, very tough, isn't it? <laughs> oh, there's a lot of wasabi in it, man. <laughs> That's all you That kills the taste, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need that. Yeah, you do. Here, let's see. <laughs> but all in all, Shandong is a pretty awesome province, and I'll never forget it. It's kind of the unsung hero of the north. It's beautifully exotic in its coastal cities. The villages are very, very well planned out, and it kind of looks like a China that you might see on a postcard. With its very palpable European influence, and simultaneously the kind of Chinese government's control and planning over some of these villages, Shandong is pretty mesmerizing. Except for the wind. But the seafood and the coast and the absolute beauty of the province it left me a bit dumbfounded. I really didn't expect it. And there was a lot of sadness when we left. Our producer Mark took it especially hard as he found some serious introspection on the ferry north to Liaoning. Are you looking forward to arriving late and then riding through the night to get past Dalian? It's a bit of a loaded question. <laughs> I just wanted to have like a final, finally get a good night's sleep, which we haven't had at all. We're supposed to get past it and then I'm pretty sure after that it's going to be all just Absolutely, in the sticks, rural crap until we hit Harbin. Yeah, and not to mention the next few days are going to be quite near North Korea. We're going to be right up on the border. And that's going to be nerve-wracking as hell. This is going to be the most difficult part of the trip. I guess the relaxing bits are over. Yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get stuck in and go sit down and do some more. I don't know. We'll catch you later. <laughs> come on, come on, come on all to the Conference of China stage performance. Today we have a lot of good entertainment from uh, our driver from Hunan and Winston Sturzel, the one and only, and uh, Mark Masterton and Rick Alfonso. <laughs> Alfonso. Now, if you guys haven't seen the show yet, uh, Conquering Northern China and Conquering Southern China are both available for purchase on Vimeo On Demand. You can use a discount code, Lao Winning, to get a discount on the show. And I really recommend you guys check it out. I hope you guys like this behind the scenes stuff. There's more to come and the story will continue. We've done some other stories about this on Serpent ZA and ADV China as well. So go check those places out for some more content about our amazing 10,000 kilometer trip across Northern China. Thank you so much, Lao Winners. If you liked the video, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And They've let me know that you gotta hit that bell button. If you don't hit that bell button, there's a chance that my videos won't even pop up in your feed anymore. So please hit that bell button over there so you can get notifications about when there's a new Loudy6 video coming up. I really appreciate your guys' support on Patreon. You guys are giving me awesome video ideas over there and I, I love the dialogue that we've been having. So thank you so much for your support over there. I wanna say thank you so much, Loud Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one.